Hey everybody, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today we're going to take a look at section 1-2. This is on special applications of ratios and proportions. So we, we learned about proportions and ratios in section 1-1, and in this section we're really going to take a, a look at some, some word problems and, and how these proportions apply to everyday real situations, especially in some of the technical fields that... Uh, a lot of our students are majoring in. Uh, so the two types of proportions that we have are direct proportions and inverse proportions. And direct proportions is basically saying that an increase in one of these objects or things or ideas leads to a proportional increase of the other. Uh, and also a decrease in one will lead to the decrease in the other. So um, an example would be like the, the horsepower of an engine and the speed that that uh, vehicle can go, right? So as you increase the horsepower, you may have a uh, proportional increase <coughs> in the speed. And vice versa, if you have a decrease in the horsepower of this engine, that may lead to a proportional decrease of the speed. So as one gets bigger, the other gets bigger, and, and one gets smaller, the other gets smaller. And this is the direct proportion. So the inverse proportion, as you may have guessed now, is kind of the opposite. <clears throat> An increase in one of these things leads to a decrease in the other, <clears throat> and vice versa. Uh, so let me give you a couple of examples. So um, an increase in the number of police officers in a town may lead to a proportional decrease in the amount of crime. Um, and once again, a decrease in the amount of police officers may lead to an, a proportional increase in the amount of crime. Um, also, think about like a, a seesaw. Um, let's say we had a, and a seesaw here. And if we left the the pivot right in the middle then you could put equal weights on both sides so for example if i had something that weighed 50 pounds on this side it would take me something 50 pounds on this side in order to move it however if we shorten one side so for example if the seesaw now looks like this um, if we had 50 pounds on this side, on the shorter side, um, we could raise that with a lot less than 50 pounds over here. So it's, it's kind of this inverse proportional effect that the shorter the side, the more weight uh, it will lift. Um, so those are just a couple of examples of the inverse proportions and the direct proportion. So now let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of exercises and, and see how we would go through those. All right, so here we see that the horsepower developed by an engine is directly proportional to its displacement. So it says how many horsepower will be developed by the engine with a displacement of 240 cubic inches if a 380 cubic inch engine of the same kind develops 220 horsepower. All right, so now we're gonna to need to set this up as a proportion. So the first thing I wanna do is I just wanna draw my quotient lines and my equal sign and start like that. Now remember, if two things are directly proportional to each other, then they both have to go on the same side of the quotient line. So they both have to either go on top or they both have to go on the bottom. If it's an inverse proportion, then the two things that are related to each other, one will go on top and the other one will go on the bottom. So that's how we set this up. So since these are directly proportional to each other, and we know that the 380 cubic engine is uh, directly related to the 220 horsepower, both of these will either both need to be on the top of our proportion or they both need to be on the bottom of our proportion. We can set it up either way. So I'm going to put them both on top. So I'm going to say the 380 
and this is cubic inches, so I can also write that as inches cubed. And that is uh, directly proportional to the 220 horsepower, so I'm going to write this over here. Now remember another thing as well is that the individual ratios should have the same type of units and cubic inches is very different than horsepower so that's another thing that tells me these need to be on opposite sides of the equal sign so now we have the 240 cubic inch so we're going to put the 240 cubic inches now where are we going to put that um, well we're going to put it on the side with the cubic inches because those units are going to be the same. So I'm going to put the 240 cubic inches on this side because the units should be either the same or the same kind. And over here, that's going to be my unknown, my unknown horsepower. So what? how much uh, horsepower is, is created by a 240 cubic engine, uh, cubic inch engine? All right, or with a displacement of 240 cubic inches. So now that I have my proportion set up, we're just going to cross multiply and divide. So cross multiply means 380, and I'm going to leave the uh, units out here because I know that this X is going to have to be in horsepower, so at the end I'll put it in horsepower. But 380 times X is 380X, and then 220 times 240 uh, let's see what that is. So I go to my calculator. 220 times 240. And that is 52,800. So 52,800. And then remember to solve for our unknown. We're going to divide both sides by the number being multiplied by our x. So that's 380. So I'm going to divide both sides by 380. So I get the x alone, our unknown variable alone. So that cancels out. So x is going to be equal to 52,800 divided by 380. So we're going to take this number and divide, oops, and divide that by 380. And I'm going to get about uh, 138.9. So this would be 138.9 horsepower. And that's, that's your final answer. So, uh, if a, if 220 horsepower, um, leads to 380 cubic inch engine, um, then 138.9 horsepower will lead to a 240 cubic inch engine. All right, well, let's take a look at another problem. Okay, so here uh, it says when a tire is inflated, the air pressure is inversely proportional to the volume of air. And let's talk about what that means. That means as the air pressure increases, the volume of air would decrease and vice versa. As the air pressure decreases, the volume of air would increase. Um, and when we set up that proportion, we're going to uh, set up the related values on opposite sides of the quotient line here. Um, so if the pressure of a certain tire is 28 um, PSI, uh, pressure per square inch, when the volume is 120 cubic inches, what is the pressure when the volume is 150 cubic inches? Uh, so at this point, let's go ahead and pause the video and give it a try, and then I'll work through the solution. All right. So let's do the same thing we did last time. First, we're going to set up our two quotient lines and our equal sign just like this. And then we're going to take the two values that are associated with, with each other, and that would be the tw uh, 28 PSI and the 120 cubic inches. Uh, why? Because it says when a certain tire is 28 PSI, then the volume is 120 cubic inches. So those two values are uh, inversely proportional. So uh, we're going to start over here. I can put that 28 PSI wherever I want. But 
for sake of argument, let's, uh, oh, hold on just a second here. Oh, there we go. Let's put it over here. So 28 PSI. Now, when it's 28 PSI, the volume is 120 cubic inches. If it was directly proportional, I'd put it right over here. But since it's inversely proportional, I'm going to put it on the other side of the quotient line. So it's 120 cubic inches. So I'll write that as like this. And then um, we have 150 cubic inches. So remember, that needs to go on the same ratio as the other cubic inches here. So we're going to put it right above here, 150 cubic inches. And that means that we're solving for the PSI over here. All right. All right, so once we have it set up, we're just going to cross multiply and divide. So that's going to be 150 times x is equal to 120 times 28. So 120 times 28. That's uh, 3,360. 3,360. And then we're going to divide both sides again by the 150 because it's what's multiplying our variable. And x is going to approximately be equal to 3360 divided by 150. So that divided by 150. And I'm going to get about 22.4. So that's going to be about 22.4 psi. Now let's make sure this makes sense because remember, as this volume um, increases, it goes from 120 to 150, this PSI should decrease because there's an inverse proportion and this is going from 28 to 22.4, so uh, at least went in the right direction. All right, guys, uh, that's it for this section. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks.